Okay, so I believe we uh, should now be live. Hello everyone, welcome to our lower bracket semi-finals match between Sass and Kada. These are two, easily two of the best runners of this game, so this should hopefully be a very exciting race to watch. Um, joined with me in the commentary booth is uh, another great runner, Duxual. Yeah, so hopefully this should be a, hopefully this will be a good race. It's, I think they've been posting fairly similar times or close times in the, I'm just seeing Regal saying oops. <laughs> just... oh, concern. <laughs> uh... It's fine, don't worry. Okay, we'll, we'll pretend that that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it'll be a nice race. Uh, we've had we've had a few good races recently, so hopefully we can continue the trend. Yeah. So I guess if uh, we're ready to go, we can give the cue to uh, start the race or for start the race. Yeah, but if they're both ready up, then, uh, yeah. Oh, it's counting down, so here we go. All right, here we go, we're off. Okay, both timers have started, that's, that's a good sign. Yeah. And they're both able to move, so that's the second good thing. All right, and uh, yeah, as, as we've had most most runs in the tournament so far, it's uh, Leaf Start, Black Fire Bombs for the uh, Quick Asylum Kill and um, Master Key. Yeah, obviously both runners are going to be doing what has been the de facto tournament route, which is ES Malus. Yeah, so we should be seeing uh, the same route on both, so it should help... Uh, know where we are at are doing some uh, shenanigans with menus though uh, <laughs> and yeah standard uh, five fire bombs so it's like three and then you try and dodge hammer different attacks but both getting through that fine getting the human's uh, great hammer Filling up their inventory. <laughs> and they're gonna they're gonna pick up their bandit's knife, which is one of the worst weapons, honestly, but we are gonna need a weapon for um not only for Taurus but to cut the hell Drake's tail. And this is the best we can get at the moment. Yeah, so you're gonna see it just uh just used early game and then uh, very quickly uh ditched for the Drake sword and then the dragon tooth. See, both runners not quitting out at the door here, obviously, because uh, save our TA. Yeah. Didn't even open the uh, menu as if they're going to do it before remembering. Like, yeah. Not even <laughs> dropping the... Ima either. Imagine not dropping the DGH on that door, SMH. Ah, uh, you, uh, you want to keep your menus consistent. So if they don't drop it normally, they're probably not going to change it now. Oh, wow, that was late. <laughs> I should get that uh, menu open quite late. So yeah, opening the keyboard controls menu because it uh, prevents you from getting a message that would stop you from sprinting. Yeah. Saves, saves, like, a tiny so bit saves, of time. saves like half a second or something. Yeah. And of course, a lot of a lot of toggling to similarly save tiny amounts of time. And then they're both gonna go to the undead merchant to buy the rapier, bow, shield, some arrows, and then they're gonna they're gonna um, scam the undead merchant by doing prompt swap for the bottomless box, which is a uh, PC exclusive because you place the mouse over one of the arrows in the merchant menu, and then you press left click and A or X at the same time, and then you can uh, bring the carry the confirmation box over to the bottomless box and buy it, even though you actually can't afford it. As we just saw Kata do. Hands on us. Yeah. So yeah, that's the, the first glitch of the run and already out of the way. 
I'm just gonna start. kick this guy. Nice. And uh, hopefully get into this uh, room to pick up your main damage dealer for uh, for the first boss, which is the gold pine resin. You get a little bit of extra damage because the the knife does bleed, but the base uh, bandit knife damage on Taurus is not very good. Yeah, but luckily Taurus is uh, weak to lightning, which is probably why they put the gold pine resin right before him. And when you mix that in yeah. with the bleed damage, he actually dies pretty quick. Oh, that's a, that's a oh. shame. Kind of, so you got like stomp, and then before he could recover, you just got it again. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's like a I don't know, minute and a half, uh, minute or so of time uh, lost like, running uh, back. Something like that, yeah. We've uh, we've actually seen a couple of tourist deaths in the tournament. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's not not been not very well. It can happen. Um, oh! Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've seen that in a while. Yeah. So if you don't quite uh, manage your stamina and everything correctly, you just uh, get burned down by a. Or if you just stand in the wrong spot, you just get burned down by Hellkite. So yeah, That's... both of them having to run back. Okay, that, was a, that was a very quick lead change. <laughs> Yeah, Sans knew that Red so was uh, putting all of his uh, channel points on on uh, on him, so he just had to, you know, even things out a bit. Oh, Kata had to quit. Oh, he failed the uh, roll, yeah. So it's slightly faster to go this way if you don't need the gold pine resin. So you just, you just do a roll down to there, but not many routes do it, so I guess if you don't do it, you... A chance of rolling at the wrong spot. Although he, he does it in, he, he uh, does it in AA. Yeah. yeah, but you see, Sass is going round, which is but, a bit uh, slow. Yeah. To be fair, he never, really gets, he, he, he never gets to NG, so he never gets to do that roll anyway, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, Kada does have to refight Taurus, whereas Sass is just going to run straight through. Yeah. Yeah, he also yeah. went kind of the long way round. <laughs> he didn't need the resin. Though, if he gets a perfect fight, he should still be a tiny bit ahead. Yeah, we're going to find they're probably pretty even still, despite all of this, because he's finished and Sass is just coming through as well. Yeah, he's got to wait for the a, fog He's, he's a tiny, yeah. tiny bit ahead still. He's like barely a few seconds ahead. Yeah. So thankfully, you don't actually need uh, all three resins in this route. You only need two, so. Uh... Oh yeah, but Sass actually has nothing. Oh god. Yeah, he's got to deal with the fact that all of the uh, characters, mostly this Pike guy. Okay, he got the Drake Sword, but now he's got to Won't get out of sure. here. Yeah. It's really awkward with the Pike dude, because quite often you end up just bouncing off your weapon off of his uh, shield <laughs> and not getting the tail cut. Okay, yeah, losing a bit of time here to healing, but both of them going for the uh, next glitch of the run, which is Sandsgate Skip. Yeah, um, so with uh, ten, with Sandsgate Skip basically um, on a specific point in the stairs, on the stairs before the Undead Parish Bonfire, if you do have a post animation, you can push your character back far enough to trigger what we call a death cam, which is <laughs> normally the cam where you get when you fall into your death. And basically the game basically stops loading new assets in that state because the game thinks you're dying but because we're actually not going to be dying in this state um, we can actually just run straight into sense fortress and the gate will be deloaded all right so yeah you can see Kada getting the death cam says also I think, I think he's good yeah right side SGS square community yeah, just if you're a little bit low, but it's just fine. When you do it and you, you you think you've got it and then you do the pullback with the punch and then 
triggered the uh, kill plane, but no, he was fine. And yeah, both of them getting the bonfire in time before the uh, hollow that can follow you blocks you from uh, from taking it. All right, so yeah, this is somehow still pretty even. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if either of them know. Think, yeah, both of them probably think they're really behind. Um, after the early deaths. Yeah, I, th I think I think Kato reads the chart, but I don't think Sass does. So it's gonna be interesting. interesting. Yeah, I don't know if either of them do. But, uh, I guess we can ask afterwards. Yeah. He will for sure. You're ahead, Rupal. You're ahead. So, Doc, do you want to um, explain the move swap that uh, Kada just did? Um, not really. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, so both of them, in fact, have just uh, done a move swap, which puts the move set of the rapier, which is in their right hand, onto the drake sword, which is in their left hand. And you do this by attempting to two-hand a bow, where well, you queue up two-handing a bow, and then before it actually does the two-hand animation, you swap the bow for the drake sword, and then it completes the two-handing. Um, and so you have the weapon two-handed in your left hand, which the game normally doesn't let you do. And the side effect of this is the running attack, plunging attack, and rolling attack, which the bow wouldn't normally have um, from your right hand. Um, get implied, applied instead. So the running, rolling, and plunging attack from the rapier gets applied to the drake sword. So the rapier has a two-hit running attack. Oh, there was a quit out there. Oh, that's for the boulder. Yeah. Um. So you get extra damage more quickly, and so this is like the main melee strat, I guess. Glitch that's used for keeping melee fast and. Preventing runs from being pure magic or BKH. <laughs> and they they also um, went and freed uh, Logan because they want to buy some soul spears from him later for some tricks. Yeah. Thankfully, the uh, attacking with the Drake sword on the snake from the right angle just breaks the wall immediately. It's pretty nice. So coming up to the, I guess this is the third boss of the run. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Iron Golem. Uh, so, despite the move swap and the Drake Sword, he's still not dealing a lot of damage. But thankfully, Golem has a falling mechanic, which means you only need to deal 400 damage to get him to stagger, and then 200 to fall. And you get just over 100 damage per running attack, so you need basically four running attacks to stagger. And uh, ironically enough, both runners are actually using a strat, which uh, Sass actually uh, came up with for Iron Golem. So you do kind of a specific way of doing the fight, which gives you kind of the best chance of lining him up yeah. in a way so that he'll definitely fall off. Yeah, yeah basically manipulating uh, his movements. And you see Saz there having to roll into the fire and toggle to get through. Alright, and so both runners are going to be going straight for the second bonfire in An Orlando, skipping the uh, <laughs> first one. Um, this is mostly because um, they need to do Priscilla early. And if you need to do that, it's a little bit faster. Go this way. Yeah, and it's, and uh, neither of them like uh, full control for Silver Knight Archer skip, so it's actually quicker to take the second bonfire, especially yeah, if you have to split Gwendolyn and Priscilla up. <laughs> and it's quite spooky in a race because if you skip the first bonfire, you uh, yeah. if you die, you go all the way back to Undead Parish. Yeah, you Which, can see uh, Sass I think, think I've up. only seen that once in the tournament so far, I think. 
Like both of them getting past the infamous ladder, that's good. Yeah, that ladder is the, kind of the scariest spot. Not that yeah. not safe on the rafters. Um, but that's the place that's just pure randomness. Yeah, there's nothing you can do if they just throw knives at you. Yeah. Okay, both getting over there, so should be fine for getting to the bonfire. There's a little bit of RNG here as well as to whether or not the uh, the gargoyle will get on the elevator with you. Yeah. Sometimes he can actually follow you all the way to the bonfire and then you have yeah. to get out, which is really bad in RTA setting. Yeah, I tend to watch him and if he gets on, because even if he doesn't block you from the bonfire, unlike uh, regular enemies, he doesn't get respawned by resting. Like, he just stays where wherever he was, and that means that when you go back up to do the stairs quit out, he can just get in your way and prevent you from doing it, which can lose you quite a bit of time if you're unlucky. So yeah, both leveling up 27 strength and 15 endurance. 15 endurance is just to get a little bit more stamina. The 27 strength is the minimum required to use the next main melee weapon of the run. Which is yeah. the um, dragon tooth. And they're, they're both going to attempt a trick with the elevator where basically if you quit out before an elevator stop moving, it will go back to basically where it's like default location was before you uh, made it move again. So they're going to try to quit out um, here so that they don't need to pull the lever to bring the elevator down later. Which saves a couple of seconds. So, this is the next question is are we going to see any ONS bonfire skips? I think we will from Carter, but I'm not sure from Sass. Yeah, if he does after his last race. <laughs> yeah. Immediately dying to the Silver Knight does. <laughs> For some karma, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. So ONS is probably, I don't know, it's probably still the hardest fight in the route, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Especially now. It's definitely the most Both. RNG heavy anyway. Yeah, despite not having a Red Tear Zone ring for it, you still can't take that much damage. There are still a few things that can kill you pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, get a nice Drake Sword R2 to throw the nice. uh, Silver Knight off. Lovely Let's little uh, versions of Silver Knight. That's cool. Sailing animation, yeah. You don't get you don't get a nice animation with the uh, the, and he just decides he's gonna fall off. Oh yeah, it looked like that was kind of skipping it, was it? Yeah, I think uh, he did. Not actually, getting killed might, immediately actually, by might, the... actually, my nod of I didn't see really. Well, he's not on full health, so I assume he skipped it. Yeah, that's true. Sass, on the other hand, getting it, so... Yeah, he's not boning back, he definitely didn't take it. Yeah. No, we'll see if uh, there's any karma this time around. Oh yeah, you see Sass getting hit by the knight. <laughs> Monka. Yeah. Didn't, didn't die to the silver knight, but yeah. If he dies, he's gonna go all the way back to the bonfire. He was at earlier. If all goes well for Kata, he's saved like you save about I don't know, eight to ten seconds, I guess, in the bonfire. Yeah, it's I think it was eight, eight seconds. I think it was like eight game time, but then obviously it's a bit more if you bone back. It's like another second or two. Are you getting a good opener? Here. It looked like Smo was pretty close. Yeah. You're gonna. Oh. Monka shake. Oh. This is kind of bad. Yeah, I think he'll be alright. Okay, should be able to easily go for the kill here. Okay, nice. Oh. oh okay, and also, yeah. Sass got the good opening as well. Yeah. That was a bit scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, he overlapped. Oh, he overlapped it. Yeah. yeah. He attacked just a tiny bit too early. Yeah. If you, if you attack early enough, the previous stagger animation hasn't really finished for Ornstein. And, um. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kind of getting through phase two. Sass has to go back in the fight. Yeah, it's a fair lead for Kata. Yeah, dying, dying 12 nurse isn't the biggest time loss, though. Yeah, it would have been if back Kata up. had died for them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, you get to see yeah. The, the difference see the of the charged opening. Oh, oh gosh. Please, Sass, stop scaring us. Okay. Monks cake. Yeah. Yeah, he has to dodge that. They could have gone for the kill, actually. Did. I don't know if he knew where... Oh, gosh, please, Sass, no. Nice, the standard by frame saved him there. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I saw that oh, one coming. The oh, the <laughs> Well, this is what we meant when we were talking about ONS earlier. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Catalyst uh, going towards Gargoyles, so getting getting through the bosses you'd normally have to have done before going to Anor Londo, but much more damage and um, a lot easier now you have the Dragon Tooth. Yeah, and it might, might, oh, seem, um, it might seem counterintuitive to go and ring the bells, which is what Kata's going to do, even though he did Sense Gate Skip, but... Uh, Ringing the Bells also awakens Framped, which we, we need him to be awake so we can do some scamming with him a bit later. Yeah. Three charge openings in a row. What a legend. Yeah. And now he gets perfect yeah. going, Stein. Feels bad now. Yeah. That's usually the case, isn't it, though? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so Dragon Tooth making pretty short work of the gargoyles. Meanwhile, yeah. Sass just doing the stagger lock on Smo. Yeah, one of the nice things about the Dragon Tooth is that it deals an insane amount of poise damage. So you just stagger everything in one hit usually. Yeah, it's usually like uh, one running attack, two two ticks is enough to stagger. Yeah. Most things that can be staggered. Like, this includes, like, Gwyn, uh, Artorius, Guardian, I think, takes more than one, maybe? Uh, it depends when you it hit it Guardian. It on, depends on the attack he does, or what you yeah. do. I'm just gonna kick Lordrag off. This is, like, a double thing. First off, the 1,000 souls he drops lets us have enough souls to buy a Catalyst from Rickert. But also killing him now prevents him from uh, killing the firekeeper, which would lock out the um, firelink bonfire, um, and that co that would cost you a lot of extra warps, which isn't the worst. Uh, except RTA, it's really really bad. Yeah. Let's hit buying the catalyst because we're going to use some some magic later on in this uh, route. Not much later on, actually. Uh, fairly yeah. soon. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna see Kada attempt um, the Blighton plunges, and basically what happens is when you when you plunge on a sloped surface in this game, the game basically gives you like this really weird glitched animation that it lets you roll out of, and if you time it correctly, you can actually iframe lethal fall damage that way, which is what he's gonna attempt to do to get to the bottom of Blighton really quickly. Yeah. So this is one of the fastest ways down Blight Town now. Not the fastest, but it's it's up there. I think uh, RTA wise, it's the fastest though. Yeah, I, I guess if you're talking about going down Blight Town, it is the fastest way, yeah. <laughs> because the other way it doesn't go down Blight Town at all. Yeah. I don't know if the remaster air rolls are actually faster or just the plunges are really bad in remaster. Well, I think the. The meme roll setup would be slow out real time though because of the quit out. Maybe That's not. True. Yeah, that's what I thought we go. 
Yeah, I guess as soon as you've done a quit out, it's like, yeah, there's a bunch of times they'd probably do the, uh, oh, failed move swap. Are we going to get an AFK? Don't, I, I didn't, did, did, the, uh, did, yeah, did not hit time. the right in five uh, second interval, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> so there's been uh, some new discovery on what makes bosses not start i guess is the best way <laughs> we did we call it afk but so like they just sit there at the beginning of fights there's quite a few that can do it and it's it's to do with like equipping and um toggling and unequipping just at the wrong moment when something updates or the right moment depending on if you want it or not yeah i definitely feel like ever since i've gained this knowledge i've had more afks and runs <laughs> it's pretty funny yeah, there are some bosses for which it's really good, and for some bosses for which it's really bad. Like, I'm AFK Arcorius is pretty good. Um, yeah, oh yeah, killing Engie. It goes well. <laughs> yeah, killing Engie. And he's going to take the DLC bonfire, which is actually the main time save of SGS in all bosses. Because it means you only have to go down to Blight Town once. It's nice. And yeah. he's going to place some items in his bottomless box, and now he's going to go do some scamming. Um, which I'm not the best at explaining it. Do you want to maybe explain it, Doc? You might know it a bit better. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like uh, underflow scamming, I guess, plus using stored quantities uh, to set that up. So he's going to sell... Um, first off, he's going to dupe arrows using a pre-stored zero value, which you can roll over to 99. And you can, like... Apply a value that's already stored in memory that should really be overwritten um, by storing this. <laughs> You're seeing this uh, con confirmation box prompt, and if you store that, it somehow prevents the game from updating the value to what you, the number you should be able to sell. Um, and so instead, you can sell 999 copies of something. Um, and the underflow part means that once you've sold 999 copies of it, um, by having it in the bottomless box, uh, the quantity you have underflows, and you end up with 99 copies of the thing you just sold 999 of. Yeah, yeah the game the game basically thinks that because you sold more of an item than you have, then you actually must just have the max number of the item. So Yeah, it's like it goes to sort of max negative, I guess. So you get to sell the item and dupe it at the same time, essentially. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty good scam. And he, he saw Kara, he, he also did the quantity storage on um, Logan as well to buy four charges of Soul Spear. Yeah. And he bought Skull Mass and then he got a bunch of levels. Similarly preventing it from updating to say you should only be able to buy one copy of Soul Spear. So instead it uses the stored value and he buys four. So currently Catalyst is ahead. Um, Sass had yeah, some unfortunate deaths to Ornstein and Smo. Um, yeah, they're around one segment apart headed. at the moment. Yeah, they're not hugely apart. Like a, a any sort of big mistake from Catalyst would probably put them much closer again. But yeah, any any major ish death would put Sass in the lead. So Kada was to have one. Yeah. It gets a lot harder. To, I don't know if it, but say it gets a lot harder to die from this point on. But um, well, yeah, when you have like thirty-three vit, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> it can still happen. There are still a few uh, instant deaths. Yeah. And we see that uh, Kata is going to be now fighting Stray Demon with Soul Spears and Soul Mass, which uh, is probably one of the only fights I'm, I miss from this route. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's only because you used to do melee, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's actually true. Magic Sif was good. Oh! Yeah. It's quite funny that Stray, like, can, can even though he's, like, this enormous target, if he turns sidewards and you lock on, it just misses half the time. <laughs> he's just too nimble. Yeah, 
nice strat there with the dark sign where basically because you duck when you do the animation, the Black Knight running attack just goes right over your head. It's pretty funny to watch. It's pretty, pretty neat. Um, go to the painted world and uh, pick up an item he needs from well, from the painted world. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they're they're doing it because um, first it's I believe a few seconds faster to do dark on Orlando earlier, and also because as Doug mentioned, they need to pick up an item called the red sign soapstone, which is going to be used for a very important glitch in the next segment. Yeah, so uh, they're going to do another glitch related to the, the duping they were doing earlier. Um, in the same way they buy four copies of Soul Spear from Logan using a stored value, they're going to buy 999 pikes from Andre using the same method. And what this does is it fills the inventory weight limit. And as a side effect, you can no longer remove rings. Um, and... Related to that, this there's a dialog box that pops up, and then you you get like an equip menu, um, and you can use this to equip basically any item in any slot. And if the category changes, uh, the type of item will just be based on whatever ID it is in the category it should have been from. And the ID number for the red sign stopestone conveniently matches with the ID number for the red tearstone ring. And um, so by equipping this consumable in the ring slot, it turns into red tearstone ring. Um, it's a lot easier to do than it is to explain. So that's why they're picking up this uh, this PVP item. There are, there are other items you can do it with, which is, some of them are quite fun, like the Priest Hat turns into the Black Knight Sword. Um, I think one of the, the, like the Short Sword or something turns into some part of Thorn Armor. I can't remember like which, but there's yeah. just, like some swords that turn into armor. You can also uh, get hair if you're bald with uh, ESM as well. Oh yeah, I can't remember what you've got to equip for that, but yeah, that, that's another one. First great sort of Artorius as well. It's uh, yeah. like the the priest armor or chest piece. Oh, I that think. one's hilarious. A oh, nice spawn from kind of there. Yeah. Right oh, but him. he cast homing again. <laughs> yeah, this is another nice time save from the old uh, Dragon Tooth version of this. That so, yeah, you just soul spear and she dies really fast. Yeah. So now um, Kada's going to be doing um, ESM. Um, I'll give a, a more, more of a simpler explanation since Doc went through um, this tree. So oh, some of the technicalities of it. But basically he's going to perform quantity storage to buy 900, 999 pikes, which actually overflows the weight limit of this game. Um, and the weight limit is a, it's a leftover mechanic from Demon Souls, which... Um, but the thing is, they set it at such a high number in this game that it's pretty much impossible to reach normally. But when you quantity storage 999 pikes, you easily overflow 10,000 weight units, uh, which puts us into crammed state where you cannot pick up items and you cannot unequip your ring. And that's because in Demon Souls, there was a ring called the Ring of Herculean Strength, which would give you extra like weight equip load in that game. And if you went above the extra it gave you and tried to unequip the ring, you'd get like a message saying, you can't unequip this, you know, otherwise you'll be overburdened. And for some reason that message is actually left over in DS1, but because the ring doesn't actually exist, it's just like an error dialogue box question mark message. And for some reason, when you do, when you, uh, when you make it go away, the game then lets you equip items from other equipment slots into your right ring slot or any other slots if you do it right. And because um, the game only checks for the ID of an item um, rather than the item itself, because the Red Tearstone Ring shares the same ID as Red Sign Soapstone, it just equips that in your right ring slot. And yeah, skips having to go get it normally. 
So if you didn't understand it before, you really don't understand it. Uh, <laughs> now that we've explained it twice. Um, anyway, so we saw Kata uh, using the Crest of Artorius. He actually did another prompt swap to buy it because he wouldn't have had enough souls. And he's put this is just to take extra full damage from weight because there's like a Tistone Ring setup coming coming up jump and you need like as much weight as you can because it turns out your weight actually affects uh, how much fall damage you take even though it's it's like percentage based in some way you can take a little bit more with, uh, with more gear yeah i think it's percentage based off your equip load actually specifically well, i mean if you equip 999 pikes you always end up on one hp there <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, an old setup that uh, for some reason fell out of favor. <laughs> Honestly, it's not even a bad setup, to be honest. It's like the simplest one. Yeah, the, the trees can follow you, and if one of them lands on you, they do like, I don't know, two damage or something, but that's enough <laughs> to kill you if you, uh, if you have that setup. Alright, so he's killed the Hydra, which, while not being a boss, uh, is just part of the uh, way of getting into the uh, expansion, I guess, the DLC. You need to kill this guy in Free Dusk. And another side benefit of Free Dusk is that um, she places her summon sign, unfortunately, right on the other end of this uh, arena. <laughs> it would be so nice if she just placed it where she is there. No, she makes you run all the way across. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he's going to go summon Dusk to buy Hidden Body, but a side effect of that is then when he's going into the DLC, her armor set will be by the DLC entrance. Um, and the crown is a nice damage boost for sorceries, which is going to come in handy later. Yeah. So it takes around a minute to get, but because of one king and two cycle calamity, do you easily save that? Just time about back? Three there, yeah. yeah. And some minor time saves as well, flick game bosses. Yeah, oh, so, so yeah, this is another glitch, actually, which I'd forgotten you do here. <laughs> His um, negative, droop, well, negative duping at dragon scales by storing a negative quantity and then dropping that negative quantity, which, you know, has the effect of adding on the quantity he would have dropped. Yeah, so basically the way it works is he performed quantity storage to buy 999 uh, catalysts. Um, and uh, nice. basically, when you try to buy it again, the game basically runs a calculation on what the max number of the item it should offer you is. But because it's a catalyst, obviously the number is one. So it just is just one minus how many you have, basically, which gives us negative quantity. And then when you drop an item in a double menu, you can actually drop a negative quantity, which then dupes the item for you. Okay, so yeah, um, on the way to Butterfly, you, someone pointed out he picked up the Elite Knight set. This is part of an air roll setup. Um, so air rolls is like another full damage cancelling glitch, much like the plunges uh, we've seen both runners do a few times um, except you no longer need like a ledge or anything to do them you can just spam roll but the issue is in remaster there's like quite a wide range of equip load that you can use to set the set this up but in prepared to die edition you need to basically be exactly on the weight threshold but you need there to be a floating point computer in a numerical error um that is positive and pushes you over the weight limit. Yeah, basically, um, in, um... and this just allows you to roll in midair and not take damage from lethal falls. Yeah, we can, I guess, go a little in depth later when we see it in action. We will see it in the DLC. Um, uh, yeah, that's why. Have, uh... Yeah, it's like the elite knight set. Yeah, yeah now we're so, going to yeah, see Kata is ahead by like a couple of segments now. So now we're going to see Kada do uh, Duck's favorite variant of um, Sif, which is Soul He's going to die to it now that you've said that, isn't he? It's just 
you, you just cast it. Totally not intentionally. It's okay because both runners doing magic sift, so I can't tell <laughs> twice. Dang, most of the soul spears actually hit. Yeah, the some I guess if you dodge sidewards, if you dodge forwards, they all miss. And that was pretty good magic sift. Yeah, that was really nice. Now he's gonna get Dragon Tooth plus five, which well, when mixed with moves swap and Artie's are is just so powerful. Alright, and he's going to Analondo to deal with Seath. And it's not it's not like you'd uh, necessarily have to do Seath Eddie, but the the final part of the uh, DLC entry involves killing a crystal golem in Duke's archives. Yeah. I have no idea why though. <laughs> Bloody for himself. So in uh, up-to-date routes, uh, or modern routes, you'll actually see people nowadays um, skipping the bells and doing a nice teamwork skip here, but uh, that's not a part of these, this route, though. Yeah, most of those routes are kind of uh, race-unfriendly. Because um, you got low vit and, uh, you know, one slip up or one just bit of bad luck and, and your run's kind of dead. Especially if it happens in an area like Duke's Archives, perhaps? Yeah, if, if perhaps like a, a couple of hollow staggers you and then you get hit by something else. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing more to say on that matter, I feel. I mean, that wouldn't happen to anyone. <laughs> uh, Anyway, so yeah, this is the aforementioned Crystal Golem. He's just going to do a running attack with the Dragon Tooth. It's going to drop the Broken Pendant, which is going to let him get into the DLC. No, not not going for Zero Cycle Trident, though. That's pretty unoptimal. Yeah. Yeah, okay, for a second I thought he might be doing the quit out because he went right side. Doesn't save time, RTA, but if you've been doing it. Yeah, I don't think anyone's done it for swag yet in the journey. I haven't seen any bow setups either. Ah, he should have done the up warp, that's the reason he failed. Uh, nah, he didn't didn't do the bow setup. <laughs> yeah, he should have done both. Bow setup and up warp. Yeah. Alright, that's it for uh so it's actually quite a time loss failing Duke Skip, as I would know. Uh, what is he doing now? Duke, it's like you know, oh, he's you, waiting. I didn't know. Out is the same. I, d I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know he pulled the lever for a second. I'm pretty confused. Okay, so yeah, this is just a little bit of jumping and uh, it's kind of precise. There we go. Easy. Oh, the double block from the hollow. But he actually blocked himself by doing that running attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I assume we're not going to see a ladder skip, are we? No. Oh, a shame. Yeah, now, given that they're already here from uh, picking up the uh, LC entry key, um, they're just going to go and deal with Seath while they're here. It's actually part of why what makes Duke skip like such a big time save is you don't lose the bonfire um, in the garden. Plus all the time from not dealing with the prison, which is kind of a boring area. That's not sugarcoated, it. it's like, there's not much going on. Um, oh, nice. Especially if you do like speedrun, it's mostly just running around. Okay, yeah, we got a nice drop there, which is good at this our setup. Sass also getting the pendant. Is he gonna go for zero cycle? Also not. 
No love uh, knights on it today. Okay, and yeah, a uh, convenient side effect of having hidden body. You can just run straight through the middle of these clams and none of them should get into the arena. Without hidden body, you have to do uh, careful pathing to avoid uh, having one of them join you in the fight. Nice Sass getting a first try duke skip. So, save him a little bit of time back, but... Uh, Gonna need um it's gonna need some more help to get back into this. Yeah, we saw um Hada getting two shot thief. Um we saw he did um diagonal attacks because the hitbox of the dragon tooth is actually so big that if you just attack directly at his core sometimes it just goes through it. Or doesn't hit it even. Yeah, I think there's like an area that does extra damage and if you attack straight forward the Part of the dragon tooth that connects is like beyond that hitbox and just sort yeah. of hits regular, like if you hit the tails or whatever. Doesn't matter in the new DT plus five route though, feels good, man. Yes, yeah, it's three running attack anyway, isn't it? Because you don't have enough strength. I don't know what the threshold is for a two shot, but it's not 27. Yeah, or 28. Oh, you tried that. I think what do you get? Once. 28 now? I've put four kings or something. Alright. Mm -hmm. So yeah, doing the plunge and heading into the DLC. And you should see him pick up the um, Crown of Dusk and the rest of her set right before entering the portal. Which is now here because he has the Broken Pendant. Yep, pick up the Crown Dusk and enter the DLC. Yeah, we'll see how Guardian goes here. Yeah, so Guardian's kind of one of the more annoying bosses. If you're doing left side, got some, uh, some left side action. Ooh, that should be fine. Oh no, Guardian jumped backwards. Well, kind of a messy fight, but that works. Yeah. And we see him now um, equipping all of his armor in a specific order for the air roll glitch, which Doc mentioned earlier. Uh, basically, the, basically, the way it works is that there are multiple sub-roll tiers, essentially, for each roll type. And uh, it is actually, if you were to get below the first mid-roll tier, like just below, the game would still register you as mid-rolling, but it would it would basically forget to check if it should stop you from being able to roll midair or not um and normally um you wouldn't be able to reach the 25 between 25 and 25.88 but thanks to floating point errors of numerical values um if yes. you have the right endurance and armor setups which we do then um you can actually reach that um ratio Uh, there you go, 25.000088%. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, uh, roughly. Um, which can only, only happens because computers can't, uh, the way they've programmed this, they've used floating points which don't represent, uh, decimals exactly. Alright, so Kata going into Artorius while Sass is about to enter the DLC and go into Guardian. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice. First running attack, and yeah, got the second clean. Clean two running attack, Artorius. Oh, perfect Guardian. Well, nearly perfect Guardian, I'm sorry. A yeah, bit not quite, not quite getting a one shot, but still pretty good. 
And uh, we see Kata now warping back to the Darkmoon Tomb Bonfire to fight Gwendolyn. Um, would obviously be faster to do him earlier if it was possible to one cycle him, but it's uh, not really. So we just yeah, come back and we have plus five. Quite have enough damage. You are really close to having enough damage. But I think you may be able to get it if you get like some extra counter damage or something. But it's not consistent to do him early. Because you can do it with magic, no RTSR, but it's it's not consistent. I think I may have gotten it like once, and then I, that was like the first time I tried, and I thought, oh, it works, and then it never happened again, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, um, because you can just one shot with the the DT in a running attack. So it's kind of like this is the first time you sit down at a bonfire, you have the dragon tooth plus five. And you don't have anything else to do, so you just warp and kill Gwyndal in there. Yeah. And now, um, Kata's gonna do the obvious strategy which took speedrunners of this game ten years to figure out, <laughs> which is, um, Gothless, uh, Kalamut. Um, basically, this, the version he's gonna do was discovered by Androff, who's a community member. Um, and basically, um, you do very specific pathing once you land in the Kalamut Arena, and you can basically make your way to a uh, blind spot and basically cast a bunch of soul spears at Calamite without taking any damage at all. Yep. Oh. Sass getting a jump. But still getting the two shot, so that's good. Keeping pressure on at least. Um, so yeah, Kata going into, uh, into Calamite. So you sort of have to run towards this rock that you can barely see. Then you turn right at this... Just after this uh, fern, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, you want to go towards this red flower. It's kind of the visual cues where you stand. You need four hits, which you got there. Now he's going to nice. shrug bunch of times just to space out so right right where he is now Calamite can't see you and will return with an attack but like the the long range one he opened with like this if you if you stand too far out or if you move out too early Calamite will just spray fire across the whole arena um, and you have to run away and hide basically <laughs> So that over with, Kata's now going to go to, uh, to Manus. You can see, yeah, uh, air rolls just skip that elevator, which saves, like, a whole bunch of running around. And now that Goffless, he doesn't need to make a diversion off to the left to get the crest key. She just goes straight through the middle. It makes the, the DLC routing kind of much cleaner. Although it's not not quite the cleanest DLC routing we have now. <laughs> yeah, in the but, um, in the mo in the modern routes, um, which do melee goffless, um, you'll actually see people um, air rolling down the chasm of the abyss shortcut bonfire um, elevator instead, which skips yeah. running through township completely. Yeah, both of them died. Um, at least once. I think Hada died once, and Sass died three times. Sass died uh, twice, I'm pretty sure. He died twice to ONS. He died once to oh, the yeah, Drake. Then, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. So, yeah, kind of just doing the dark beat pick up. You can see Sass running in that pathing for Calamite. Kind of like there are different areas of the arena where Calamite will do different attacks, and you're trying to stay in the arena that gets you this attack and not him setting fire to the whole arena. So the, this this shrugging is just trying to use an item that you can't... Oh, he's got fast cycle though, so he only has to shrug six times. Oh, nice. yeah. Nice, got the last hit. It's an unfortunate oh, R1 nice R one. Oh no! Oh, 
that's kind of really got bad. Yeah, that actually means I think Sass is ahead now. Yeah, he's gonna be ahead by somewhat decent amount now. He's got a has to run all the way 40 back. seconds or something. It's quite a long run. Yeah, Kata's actually. Hey. He was doing. Um, yes, he was doing. Uh, he almost like rolled mana. into the knees of death. It felt like. Yeah, Kata fight. does get skipped that we pick up. Oh, but then he failed air rolls. So. Yeah, it's an extra ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, talking about betting in the chat, I don't know. We're actually, they're actually going to be fairly close, I think. Sass will be a little bit ahead, but not not much. Also, Kata's got to take the elevator now. Oh, yeah. You always do that, you like set up to do air rolls, and then the elevator platform's just yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. Are both runners doing the swag move swell. Very nice. Yeah, you can air roll off the elevator, but I guess it's different positioning. Oh, I only get one hit there, but I think... Do you only need half a hit on one of them? No, I think you still need a full right, do you? Oh no, yeah, there you go. Actually, still a nice fight. I'm good RNG this time around. I was like a neo perfect fight for Kata. Yeah. Now we can see oh, yeah. that uh, both runners are going to do the um, Fire Sage Elevator clip, which has uh, been a, an infamous topic of debate in the tournament. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, essentially what you do is you, you qu whenever you quit out, your character moves back a little. And because the Fire Sage Elevator is actually part of the uh, Demon Ruins, it loads in a bit later. So you just quit out a bunch of times and then you can clip through and uh, plunge on top of Fire Sage's head. Yeah, you see both runners doing the placebo version of the skit where you uh, don't move swap. <laughs> yeah, feels bad, man. <laughs> like in theory, yeah, it does change the plunge hitbox, so maybe. But uh, most I of do the time, act, it doesn't matter. I, I, I do kind of feel like it might be more consistent, but I don't think it's by any significant margin. Yeah, one nice uh, caveat of uh, plunging on top of fighters there is because his AI is triggered by the fog gate. He just he's just standing there chilling. Yeah, if you want to make it a fair fight, you can always run back and uh, turn the AI on by running near the fog gate. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> So this is this is kind of like the cleanup stage of the run, she says. Just a lot of running around and dart beating stuff. So yeah, just two shots centipede pretty casually. A bit of chaos and uh, gonna make. Another use of the firebombs we have since the start of the run. I've been holding on to them just for, uh, just for this. Yeah, 
had his favorite trick, I'm sure. Yeah. Are we going to see any uh, DS2A discounts from the, the racing? <laughs> and yeah, shades on everyone for this uh, glorious lava texture. <laughs> I think it should still count, Rigo. So basically in the Better Chaos Arena there are normally two orb things you need to destroy in order to get um, to the actual boss itself so you can kill it. But um, if you position yourself in a specific spot, you can just destroy them with bombs instead. Which yeah. pretty much skips the whole annoying part of the fight. Like it's actually one of the worst boss fights normally in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, like, when you first reach it casually, it's it's kind of painful. You Once you learn, like, strats for dealing with it, it's not so bad, but don't tell Master I said that. Uh, <laughs> I still don't want to do it ever again, so... No, uh... Item animation rando, thanks. I think the one time he actually did that, bombs had their normal animation, so I was saved. <laughs> I could still do uh, this strat. Oh, I forgot you do animation randomizer too, right? Yeah, yeah but like, we leave nice. uh, items the same for now, because just casual better chaos is not fun. <laughs> yeah, so because of the elevator clip, uh, they're gonna get. They have to have to go back to kill ceaseless. Right, it's a clean Toki bombs there from uh, Sass. Are we gonna see the same from Kata? Oh, he's doing the second bomb before the. Uh, um, no Kata bombs there. today. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be shocked, Mars, at this point. Yeah, Sass, Sass is ahead more. Yeah. That just kind of shows that, yeah, one death to Manus is more costly than uh, two deaths to uh, <laughs> Manus. I don't think other, I don't think outside of the deaths that Sans has had, like, particularly better or anything, just uh, kept up and had it pretty clean since Manus. Oh yeah, he didn't miss Duke Skip, that's right. So he's probably about a Duke Skip ahead. Yeah. <laughs> it's not far ahead, so there's not like a lot of leeway, but if we can keep this up. Ow. That's pretty mean. Mm. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm hurt inside now. <laughs> Alright, so that's that's him done with uh, Azalith and Demon Ruin, so now he's going to go and do the Fire Link cleanup. So, uh, I can't remember the order he's going for. He's going for Nito first. Yeah. Yeah, we're probably going to see like the uh, last instance of air rolls in the in the run, I think. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. So, uh, Abakum's air rolls. Actually, one of the coolest, actually, in my opinion, as well. Just... You see, because uh, because we were kind and spoke to. He doesn't interrupt us with dialogue, calling us a sorry fool as we run past and preventing us from sprinting, which is a nice little side bonus. Don't, for, don't say it, we go. A 
the last bit of like boss RNG they really have to deal with is like uh, how many how many screams, if any, do they get from Nito? Right. So yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess. Yeah, I guess Nito nice. and Four Kings are the last true RNG fights left. So yeah, technically you can get a slam or not from gaping, but I don't think that actually matters. Yeah, Vatiasa doesn't matter much. Uh, with us, yes, or just with Dark Beard, I think it might cast you one cast, and that's pretty small compared to most other bits of RNG. Oh, yeah, I think drop. It used to be a lot worse before we got the crown on Gaping. Yeah. Hey, okay, nice. There goes Pinwheel. So, yeah, with the crown, um, it's just one Dark Beard. Sadly, we lost the uh, the meme potential of the previous route where you had to do a Catalyst R2 as well. That's a nice, uh, nice Japanese pathing through um, Tomb of the Giants from SAS. Yeah. Are we going to see a Fog Gate skip? Oh. Ah. No. Will we see a Fog Gate skip from, uh, from Kata, though? So there's like a little jump you can do to uh, to skip a fog gate here, which saves like a few seconds. But obviously, if you fail it and die, then uh, it loses you a lot more. Let's see if Kata does it. it. Oh, he's going for it. Yeah, he's going and he for got it. it. Nice. Ah, uh, very nice. Well, this will be interesting if Sass gets screams on Nito, though, and Kata doesn't. No, I'm not jinxing yeah. anything, you know, but just, you know, just say. So if the early hidden body is just like a comfy thing, but it does lose you, like, a few seconds. Um, but it does mean you can just run through here and not care, what, because the pinwheels don't do anything. But they were well past them. And you see he's got the uh, sort of half health set up for RTSR. Oh, That's there's good. your first screen. Block strapped. Yeah, so... Okay. And nice, yeah, four soul spears and that's Nito. So we'll see if Sa if uh, Kata gets any screams. It does close the gap a little bit. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, straight on to four kings. This is already, you can see he's already on half health from using the dust crown ring and he's going to do a little back step strat on this elevator. I assume he does the back step, yeah. And that's just to take the right amount of fall damage to put him in red tier stone ring range. And he's he's gonna attempt the uh, the seal skip where basically he's gonna take advantage of a uh, slope quit out uh, to get uh, below the water level. Um, basically, what happens is when you land on a slope in this game, the game's basically primary concern is to get you to the bottom of the slope before actually killing you. So if you quit out at that time, then you actually won't die, but you'll end up at the bottom of the slope. Um, and that allows you to get out of bounds in this area, which lets you skip having to drain the water and all that stuff. Looked like a first try from Sass. Although he didn't get Ivan seal skip, he did like the rapier move as if he was going to do it. But yeah, first, first try seal skip, so that's nice. Yeah, same thing from Kata. Although I think he did take a little bit longer there. Ooh, Kata died. Oh. Did he get like the extra drop? Hey, where you just drop again on loading? Is that what I'm happened? Sure, I, didn't yeah. see. I didn't see. Yeah, that can happen when you quit out. I think it's like if you quit out just like a frame early or something. Yeah, according to Mario, it looked a little early. Nice.
Mm, so we saw the on Sasa's side the power of the Dust Crown and 45 decks coming into play there to allow us to get one king. Yeah, and there's, there's like a little setup with damage where you take the crown off for the first cast. Because if you have the crown on for the first cast, it immediately kills the king. Um, if you have it off, you don't deal enough damage to kill the king straight away. That lets you set up. Oh, he's going to have to... Yeah. That has also now got to aggro a hollow to get the extra damage he needs for RTSR. And of course, he's got so many levels. You really don't take a lot of damage. Let's first try uh, low on the Berg skip over from Sass's side. Yeah, that's kind of a. I guess that's a IGT strat, really, doing the quit out there, but it's it's not not massive and it does uh, get the dogs out of your way. I and guess. They can, uh, they can be kind of I, annoying. I guess if you were to, like, dark bead the dogs, it would, might be faster RTA not to quit out. Yeah, some people I've seen doing that, but it's pretty consistent just to quit out. Unless you quit out early and then you have to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Right, so Kata going for four kings again while Sass is doing a little bit of running through um, depths. Strats for uh, <laughs> Fire Sage clip, so no issues, so maybe it's not so placebo. Yeah, nice, easy two shot. It's just the, now it's just the home stretch now for Sass. Yeah, just to kill and run and, and go in for Sass while Kata has to uh, deal with. Uh, Lower Berg skip. Gazi. <laughs> nice non plunge. <laughs> I think it's intentional though because you want Sartiasar. Yeah, but then why do you do the plunge? <laughs> I don't think that uh, saves you time. Could, could be to avoid stored ball, maybe. Like, I guess you get stored all anyway. You yeah. Know, well. Yeah, it's, it's I imagine e Sass is waiting for the, the dot done from the other side at this point, but... I think both get runners it. might be thinking that at this point. But yeah, it's essentially just one Gwyn parry left, and then it's GG for Sass. Yeah. So, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I, know, I never had a moment of doubt that this would be the, the race outcome. Why I bet all my points on cool. SAS. That's a, yeah, that was a pretty crazy race. There we go. One on to SAS. It's got like 80k points, insane. <laughs> Insane gambling from commentators, I don't know.
Still actually a 113 RTA, which is not that bad actually with the amount of memes that happened. Yeah. It's like a team fiesta at the start for sure. We got, I got a cleaner and then Hada decided to return to fiesta for the end. <laughs> there is always a bigger fiesta. <laughs> I, I have experienced there is always a bigger fiesta in a couple of times. Like you think, oh, this is a complete nightmare, but turns out the other runners having a bigger nightmare. Yeah, it does go to show though that literally anything can happen in a race, no matter how good a runner might be. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And it was an, enjoy an enjoyable race, at least, though. Alright, and hopefully we'll get the Gwyn Parry. <laughs> yeah, there we go. No spins, because uh, he knows he's... Uh... Interesting. I guess we'll get uh, both runners in for an interview. A little chat. Yeah. Hello. Hi. That was uh, quite the interesting race. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely was. Yeah, kind of underwhelming, I guess, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Neither of well, us really played up to our potential, of. but <laughs> well, it, oh, it, well, it, 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 the craziness started first of all when, um, when Kada died to, uh, to Taurus. Um, so how did you feel when that happened, Kada? Uh, that was a pretty mm -hmm. good meme. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I got hit by the overhead because I couldn't, like, I got stuck between his legs, and, and then. Yeah, I got a midi, the same yeah, attack, yeah. basically on stand-up. And I was like, well, either I roll immediately when I get off the ground, or I wait like two frames and then I roll. And I chose to wait and I yeah, got hit again. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was kind of funny because like five seconds right after we saw Sas get uh, roasted by the Hellkite fire. Oh Almost damn. <laughs> immediately after. Yeah, so like right off you were then back like pretty close. Um, in terms of like where you were, like Sass was very slightly behind. Um, until you got to O and S. Yeah, how how were you? How did you feel at the after the first death, Sass at Hellkite? I don't know. I felt the well. I felt the race was over again. But I thought that <laughs> I was just do the same thing and get a one eleven with a two minute time loss. But then I also had a bad O and S. But yeah, like I should have healed after Taurus. I had an awful Taurus fight. And I had gotten hit by Hellkite in one of my earlier races. I think it was against Duck. So I knew that I'd been kind of shaky at it, but I decided to YOLO it. And then I somehow messed up the batting or stamina management and got hit there. Yes, I know. I know you haven't been reading chat, Sass, right, throughout the tourney so far. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Kado. Were you reading the chat or anything nah. during this race? I, no, okay. no, no, no. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, it was... It was Sass was like... Uh... And it was like one one segment behind up until sort of Manus. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what the were... fuck happened there. Um, like I messed up. I I got the I got the swipe opener and I got myself into a situation I should have never been in because I got an R one at the beginning. I didn't get the half attack to hit, and then I ended up in such a distance where, like, I needed to roll his jump, but I couldn't wait all the way until him landing. But at the same time, I couldn't roll immediately, so I had to roll like I don't I don't even know how I had to roll, but I just got clipped by his knee like at the very end of his hitbox. It was insane. Um, I missed Duke Skip before then, but like other than that, I was doing really well. I, I the entire time I was uh, thinking that I was probably behind or whatever, right? But I'm like, yeah, it's race, whatever. Who knows what what happened to Sass in the meantime? And yeah, I thought I was doing really well. It was like low one eleven pace, and then. Yeah, I died to Manus somehow. 
Yeah, you yeah. were yeah, you were ahead by I'd say maybe around twenty seconds or so, thirty seconds, um at Manus and then just went obviously. I think, I think it was more at that point. I think it was it yeah. was more at that point, but then then after Manus is such a long run back. Uh yeah. then you were like I don't know, it was between ten and twenty seconds behind. Um but you were gaining because like Saf had screams on Nito and you you were like right behind and up to seal skip. Yeah. yeah, so that's another one. So I got the pretty rare thing where you load back in and you fall back again. Um, so you get the double death cam. And funnily enough, I actually had this in my practice earlier today. So I was like, I need to stay vigilant after the first quit out in case it happens. And then I fucked up the quit out and I died anyway. And I was like, oh no. But I mean, at that point, I thought the race had already been over, so... Oh no, you were you were really close up to that. Yeah, <laughs> that like, really. like fifteen seconds. Like, or like one quit out. Like you did your first seal skip out, skip quit out around the same time as was doing the second one. I see. Bam. That kind of <laughs> close you were. That's that's kind of that's kind of funny how you both managed to mess up so much that it ended up being close till the yeah, end. It was, it was a very back and forth yeah. race from a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, it was but... it was entertaining as a race, even if maybe you didn't feel like uh, you you displayed like your ability and your runs as well as you'd have liked. It was it, but, it made a good uh, race. But yeah, anyway, yeah, GG um, Sass on the the run you had it was very solid after Onus, as you mentioned in chat. Um, yeah, that's been kind of what I've been doing the whole tournament. I don't know why I've just been awful at the early game, but like once I've gotten past Onus, it's usually been pretty good in all of, almost all of the races that I've had. So yeah. I guess I need to practice that before the next one. Maybe do some actual attempts to do the early game a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But... But yeah, you you managed to win. Um, you also managed to win me eighty k points. So I just want to say thank you for that. <laughs> um, oh, and, nice. And um, yeah, so you're going to be uh, advancing to the uh, the final of the uh, lo lower bracket. You're going to be facing Mario Net. Um, do you have any feelings or anything you want to say about that matchup? Well, Mario's been really consistent in this tournament. So I think if I play like this, I'm definitely going to lose. But I hope I can have another 110 at least, like I had it earlier in the tournament. But who knows? We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's going to be a good race. Yeah, for sure. And for you, Kada, you've had a long run through in the tournament. Um, this is where that run through ends, though. Is there anything you would like to say as like a final remark? Yeah, I, I was basically waiting for this race the entire tournament. So I'm glad we got to do it with Sass. I'm a little bit disappointed that we both sucked so much, but I wish yeah. uh, my opponent here best of luck, and I hope that he goes on to actually win the tournament. And of Thanks. course, as my last words, I just want to say that um, thanks to everyone who decided to participate, thanks to everyone who has been uh, commentating, of course, restreaming and organizing. Uh, I really appreciate the time that you guys are putting in. And until the, what, year 2024? Well... That's going to be my next tournament, I think. So, yeah, thanks for supporting me and uh, keep on enjoying the tourney, please. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say, Doc? Uh, no, this has, been, this has been really good fun. It was a, it was a very entertaining race. Um, a, lot of, a lot of dramatic tension. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, look forward to uh, the next race against uh, Sass against Mario. Yeah, so I'd like like to um yeah thank everyone for watching and uh, obviously Kada and Sasuration and Regal for restreaming and Duck for helping commentate with me today. Um, obviously we don't have the next race schedule just yet, um, because it's the only race to come. But hopefully it'd be within the next week for sure. So um yeah, uh, thanks for watching everyone. Yeah, thanks very much, and uh, take care.